Another short lesson, 2.4, page 131, multiplication with negative numbers. Try to do uh, not only the lecture but the problem set in one fell swoop on one uh, video. Makes it less stuff for you to watch and goes quicker. Alright, so if you remember, we did addition of negative numbers, then we did subtraction of negative numbers, and the way we subtracted is that we uh, turned it into an addition problem. Well, some of the same um, rules will apply to the multiplication using negative numbers. And uh, let me show you that first rule. 3 times negative 15. Um, the rule being, you count the number of negatives. Remember when we were, when I had 3 minus negative 2, and I would look at these, this is completely different than this, and I would have these, and because they were an even number, this turned into a positive. If it's an odd number, it stays negative. Same thing when it comes to multiplication. I have one negative sign, so it's an odd number. So my answer will be negative. Then I just multiply my two numbers together. If I had an even number of negatives, I have two. My answer is still going to be 3 times 15 but my answer will always be positive when I have two negatives or four negatives or six negatives. You can just count the number of negatives that you're multiplying and know automatically whether your answer is going to be negative or positive. Negative three times negative two times negative um, six times negative five. I can just look one, two, three, four. Four negatives, even number, my answer will be positive. So I don't even have to think about that part of it. Now I can just multiply. 3 times 2 is 6, times 6 is 36, times 5 is some big number. So it's going to be positive though because I've got four even or four negative numbers there, an even number. So um, as far as those rules are concerned, that's pretty much it as far as that lesson. Uh, there are a couple other things that we need to do as far as order of operations, and there's especially one thing that I need to get clear in your minds. Um, I'm still dealing with students even in upper level math that are having a hard time with that. And that is the difference between those two. And there is a marked difference between those two. This here says everything in the parentheses I'm going to square. So this is negative 6 times negative 6. And remember, two negatives, even number, is going to give me a positive. 6 times 6 is 36. All right. So this says everything in the parentheses is going to be squared, including the negative. This is different. This 2 does not affect this minus sign. This 2 only is affecting the 6, not in parentheses. So it only affects the first symbol to its left. So this means 6 times 6, which is 36. Then this negative gets tacked on the end of it. See the difference? This one has an answer of positive 36. This one has an answer of negative 36. Again, it's the punctuation. If I want to square the negative 6, I write it this way to show that's what I'm doing. If I don't want to square the, 30, or the 6, I just want to square the 6 and not the negative, then I write it like this. Again, there's no rhyme or reason to it except it's the punctuation to show what you're trying to get folks to do. So, very, very important for that to be pounded into your brain so that you can remember what to do with it. Um, let's, well, let's just try another one here. And this is going to, I hope, not confuse you, but it is necessary to, uh, to see. <coughs> this says I'm going to take negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. Okay. Three negatives equal a negative because they're odd. 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. Okay. Now let's do the rule here. We're only cubing the 4. 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. Then we take the negative and put it on there. Notice, answers are the same. That's okay. When you have an odd exponent, 
this and this are going to give you the same answer. It's the even number, like the last one I did when they were squares, that made the answer different. So, either way, if you follow the rules for even numbers and know that this is, um, well, let's put a 2 up there again. This is negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. And this is 4 times 4 is 16. Tag the negative on it. If you remember this, it works for odds too. It's just you're not you're going to be more apt to get it right with an odd number because it doesn't matter how you do it. But just do it the same way for all of them, and you'll be you'll be safe. All right, <clears throat> order of operations. Let's throw some stuff up here. All right, so let's. MDOS. Okay, we're going to do this in parentheses first. Everything else is going to stay the same. Negative 5 all by itself, so obviously we're not really concerned about the parentheses here. But we're going to do the addition here. 3 plus negative 5. Signs are different. Take the difference between the two. Put the sign of the largest number there, and we're good. So now we have negative 6 times negative 2. Two negatives, even number of negatives give you a positive all the time and you get a 12. All right, let's try example number 15 on page number 133. Negative 3, 2 minus 9, plus 4 times the quantity, negative 7 minus 2, and let's do in parentheses first. And again, we've got two sets of parentheses. We can do both of those parentheses in the same step because we're not combining anything yet. So, this can be written as 2 plus negative 9. And this can be written as negative 7 plus negative 2. Okay, so now let's see what we can do inside this parenthesis. Different signs, take the difference between the two, sign of the largest number, and we're good there. Four, two numbers have the same sign. We add the numbers together, put the sign on there. Now we go from left to right. Uh, multiplication. Negative times a negative is a positive 21. And a positive times a negative, let's put our plus sign there. Positive times a negative is a negative 36. Have a plus sign here. Signs are different. We take the difference between the two and put the sign of the largest number on my answer and I get negative 15. All right, so again we're just taking that order of operations and taking it a step or two further. Brings us to our problem set on page 135. Numbers 1 through 20, you're just doing the multiplication. Um, look at number 20. <clears throat> we have three negatives there. Multiply an odd number of negatives, your answer is going to be negative. So just put a negative up there and then multiply the 2, the 3, and the 4. 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is 24, so your answer is negative 24. Uh, 21 to 26, they're using that <clears throat> little exponent thing that we went over with whether there's uh, parentheses around it or not, so helping you to practice that and get used to that. Numbers 31 through 54 on page 136. Um, just did some of those. Um, not really, really too bad. Uh, number 50, you're just going to do what's inside the parentheses first. That's 6 minus 9, you're going to change it to a 6 plus negative 9. The 3 minus 8, you're going to change it to a 3 plus negative 8. Solve what's in the parentheses, and then multiply the first parentheses answer times negative 3. Second parentheses answer times positive 2. And then add those two numbers together, and you get your final answer of negative 1. So, <clears throat> not too bad. Look over at applying to the concepts. Um, got a bunch of random stuff there. A hot air balloon rising to its cruising altitude on number 71. Air temperature drops 4 degrees, so minus 4, each time the balloon rises 1,000 feet. What is its net change in air temperature around the balloon as it rises from 2,000 to 6,000? So if it goes from 2,000 to 3,000, it lost 4 degrees. 3,000 to 4, another 4. 4,000 to 5, another 4. 5,000 to 6, another 4. So add all those up and you get your negative 16. Alright, that's it for problem set 2.4.